guys how you doing today welcome to the channel I want to talk about improvisation a little bit and by now you probably know the major scale inside and out if you don't um, I did three videos on some scale practice and uh, the major scale kind of explaining it uh, now let's try to apply this to playing over a major chord and there's a lot of things you do on over a major chord but I'm gonna I'll cover two or three things in this video and then uh, I'll keep on progressing uh, first off, you need to get in touch with the intervals and how they sound against the chord because you want to have almost like an emotional response to that. Like when you hear the third, you want to, it should do something for you, like a certain emotion, right? Sharp 11, you know, fifth, sixth, right? And the seventh. They all have like a sort of a vibe to them. So, um, you want to get in touch with that. And the best way to do that is just you play a little uh, thing on iReel and you play each interval and you and you kind of play around that interval. Like in other words, if I play the major seven, I might I might play the major seven and the next note up and the next note down. And right now we're just sticking to the major scale. Uh, we're, kind of, we're going to be talking about the Lydian scale as well over this chord. But right now I just want you to get in touch with all these notes. Now the only, um, the only note that is really like an anomaly is the fourth of the scale. It doesn't really sound great if you lay on it too long. The sharp 11 or the sharp 4 does sound good, but the, the natural 4 doesn't. So you use it almost like a passing tone. But anyway, let's, let's play a little bit, and I'm going to try to kind of explain what I'm doing uh, at the same time. Here we go. So here's just a little uh, C major thing, like a Brazilian flavor, uh, C major 7. And then I have it, excuse me, C major 7, 9. And then I have it going to a C major 7 sharp 11. Uh, and here we go. Let's play a little bit here. So you know the root doesn't really give you a lot of energy as far as what the chord is, because it's just the root, right? It doesn't make it major or minor. So the third is a good note. A lot of melodies start in the third. So that's the third. Now here's the fifth. Major seven. It's a nine. So that what, what that gives you is an overall on each interval, uh, how they sound against the chord. And that's what's important because you just don't want to be juggling notes that are in the major scale. You want to know what note you're landing on and you want to have a, a reason for that, right? Because you want to hear that note. So, um, you just want to get in touch with that so that if you want to play, and this goes for bass lines, improvisation doesn't really matter, because if you're um, making a bass line, you know, and you want that to be the part of the bass line, the nine, you know what the nine is, right? Or if you want it to be the third, you know, so you can do that and, and outline the chord a little bit better. Because when you're making a bass line, or when you're soloing, um, if you land on the notes of the chord, you're going to sound melodic. If you land on the upper extensions, in this case like the 9, sharp 11, or the 13, you're going to still sound melodic, but a little bit more contemporary, let's say, right? Um, and then the other five notes that are not in the scale, you're going to add a lot of tension. And we're going to talk about that later on. 
not in this video, but that's really important too because there's really no wrong notes. It's, it's really the next note. So you can add a lot of tension and then release it on a note that's in the chord. That's the way I think about it. Um, so again, I uh, want to get in touch with this so that you know, um, you know what you're hitting. You're not just hitting something because it's in a fingering. You're hitting it because you want to hear that. Uh, let's try it again, and I'm going to tune up just a little bit. So take a little break here to tune up. Um, let's talk about uh, putting a bass line on this now and just experimenting with that. Because really, I don't want you to think that you're playing bass and then you go to take a solo and there's a big switch that goes on because you're going to get all nervous then. Everything is the same. All the notes are the same. doesn't matter what instrument you're playing. you got 12 notes to, to deal with. And um, there's not, I don't think bass licks and piano licks, I just think you're playing a line, whatever the line is, or you're improvising. Um, it's all music, you know, you know what I'm saying? So let's try to make a little bass line and I'll try to explain what I'm thinking. Because if you, if you really get this together, you should be able to come up with 200 bass lines at work. It doesn't really matter. So let's try, um, I'm going to take the bass out of this. Okay, and now it's just going to be Rhodes and the keyboard, uh, Rhodes and the drums. Here we go. And I'll just kind of mess around and give you an idea. Now, when you're making a bass line, of course, you do want to hit the root. <laughs> Here we go. So now, um, I'm going to do like a root, and I'm going to go up to the nine, just to see what happens. Maybe I'll go up to the nine, and then go up to the third, and then go up to the sharp, but I'll just go up the scale. Just for the top note, let's try it. Sharp 11. Fifth. Thirteen. Major seven. So here I'm going root fifth, but now I'm going up to the sixth or the thirteen. So there I messed around with a couple different things. I went, I did a little chromaticism in there. But for right now, just, you know, I went, you know, so I, I was thinking major scale, root, third, fourth, sharp four, fifth, sixth. Then I just added a flat seven to major seven. Now, technically that note wouldn't really work, but because you're using it as a passing tone, it does. And what I mean by that is I'm going to, play a similar thing up an octave, kind of, kind of do that and, and give you an idea what happens if you lay on a note too long and it doesn't fit. I'll do major scale. Remember that fourth you can't lay on, you can lay on the root. But if you hit the fourth, very dissident. Doesn't mean you can't play the fourth. Remember, you, tension is a great thing as long as you have tension and release. You need that in music. You need the tension. You need the, the notes that are necessarily in the chord. And then you resolve those notes into something really powerful like a third or the seventh or the ninth or something like that. But um, every note in the major scale works on this chord except the fourth. You can't lay on it, okay? So let me go up the, the scale a little bit again. Sharp 11, 5th of course, 6th, 7th, root. Now I'm going to play a little chromaticism now on that and you'll see that um, you know as long as I don't lay on too long, like, like flat 7 for instance, 
It's not in the chord. If I just play flat seven, it'll sound horrible. But if I put it between the, the sixth and the seventh, major seventh, then it works. Let's hear that. Now, if I just play the flat seven, you'll see it won't work. Sounds horrible, right? But if I put it in conjunction with the other notes, same here, I played the fourth, but I didn't lay on it. I went fifth down chromatically to the third. So um, the thing to do right now for this lesson is um, mess around with it. Just kind of loop it. I'll put a link for this um, um, iReal Pro song that I put together. It's not even a song. It's just one chord. I, I'm sure you can figure that out, but I'll, I'll put it up there anyway. And um, just mess around. Just like play different notes. And if you play something that doesn't work, analyze what that is. Why didn't it work? Was it the flat seven that you laid on too long? Was it something else? You know, don't do that. Um, now, a little bonus thing for you guys. Um, now, you know, in music, sometimes you have to think in, in um, dualities. So I'm going to give you something that's, you know, up, this is called a major pentatonic. Okay, major pentatonic. It's one, two, three, five, six, and then root again. Uh, now, if we think Lydian scale, there's three pentatonics in that scale. C, D, and G. So, so oh guys, I want you to start getting into that now. What that means is, even though I'm playing, let's say I play a D major pentatonic over this groove, it doesn't mean that I'm thinking in D and I'm only thinking, I'm th I know that it's still a ninth, a third, a sharp 11, a sixth, a major seven, a nine. I know that. But I also know it's a, a D major pentatonic. And I'll show you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to jam on this. And I'm going to play C major pentatonic. Then I'll play D major pentatonic. And then G major pentatonic. And, what you're, and, and you're going to hear kind of the differences. And it all kind of makes sense, though, phrasing-wise. Here we go. I'm going to go to D now. Now G. Now that sounds... Uh, now I'm going to do it with the bass line behind, underneath me so it'll make a little more sense. You'll hear like the harmony a little bit better. Okay, here we go. I'll play up higher now. C major pentatonic. I'm going to go to D major pentatonic. I'll go to G. together. Okay, so have fun with that. Um, Try all of that, just to recap again. Um, try not to always play the root, because as bass players, we're so used to doing that, and that's a great function to do in music. But we, you know, when you take a solo or you're playing a melody, it doesn't give a lot of energy, because it's just the root, and it doesn't tell you what the chord is. Like, try to shoot for thirds and sevenths for now, 
and, and really master that first and then move on to other things. And, and again, like baseline, soling, it's all the same. Don't think that it's a different world. Try to think the same way. Okay, so have fun. Please subscribe so we can keep on doing these videos and I'll see you soon. Take care. Mullet!